In today's lesson, we will complete chapter two, grammar, and we will begin on page 43 in your workbook. Direct objects. A direct object is a noun, pronoun, or word group that tells who or what receives the action of a verb or shows the result of the action. A direct object answers the question what or whom after a transitive verb. Examples. Did you attend the football game? You did attend what? Game. Did you meet Jason and Molly there? You did meet whom? Jason and Molly. In the following exercise, we're going to underline the direct objects in the following sentences. Example, many reporters interviewed the winning quarterback. Quarterback is the direct object. Let's do number one. In 1967, Los Angeles hosted the first Super Bowl game. Game is the direct object. Number two, more than 60,000 fans attended the game at Memorial, Memorial Coliseum. Game is the direct object. Number three, Kansas City played Green Bay in the first Super Bowl game. Green Bay is the direct object. Number four, Green Bay defeated Kansas City by 25 points. Kansas City is the direct object. And number five, before the Super Bowl became an annual event, the two best teams from the National Football League played a championship game. Game is the direct object. Page 44, indirect objects. An indirect object is a noun, pronoun, or word group that often appears in sentences containing direct objects. An indirect object tells to whom or to what or for whom or for what, the action of a transitive verb is done. Example, I showed mom and dad my report. Showed to whom, mom and dad. Exercise A, underline the indirect objects in the following sentences. Example, Mr. Grieco gave us a quiz in math today. Us is the indirect object. Let's do number one. I lent Yolanda my baseball glove. Yolanda is the indirect object. Number two, Maxine baked us a vegetable pizza. Us is the indirect object. Number three, the 19th Amendment gives women the right to vote. Women is the indirect object. Number four, Nathan bought his grandfather leather gloves for Christmas. Grandfather is the indirect object. And number five, at the concession stand, Tim bought himself a bag of popcorn and a bottle of water. Himself is the indirect object. Let's go to exercise B. You need to rewrite the following sentences, making each underlined phrase an indirect object. Example, please give this message to Terrence or Scott. It should be, please give Terrence or Scott this message. Let's do number 11. I will give you examples of my answers. Number 11, Heather knitted a pair of socks for her baby brother. Heather knitted her baby brother a pair of socks. Number 12, the camping trip provided plenty of exciting moments for the hikers. The camping trip provided the hikers Plenty of exciting moments. And number 13, did you send invitations to Rebecca and him? Did you send Rebecca and him invitations? Page 45, direct and indirect objects. We're going to review them. A direct object is a noun or pronoun or word group that tells who or what receives the action of a verb or shows the result of the action. Example, Gail visited an island in Florida. Gail visited what? Island. An indirect object is a noun, pronoun, or word group that often appears in sentences containing direct objects. An indirect object tells to whom or to what, or for whom or for what, the action of a 
transitive verb is done. Example, give Tish and me your tickets. Give to whom? Tish and me. Exercise A, decide whether the underlying words in the following sentences are direct objects or indirect objects. Above each underlined word, write DO for direct object or IO for indirect object. Example, who gave the teachers and students the maps showing the form's location? Teachers, students, or indirect objects. Let's do number one. The juniors planned a trip to Bell Grove, a 19th century form. Trip is the direct object. Number two, form children performed many chores before school each day. Chores, chores is a direct object. Number three, they gave the chickens feed and milked the cows. Chickens is the indirect object. Number four, all family members had specific duties in the barn and fields. Duties is the direct object. And number five, form hands scattered straw over the barn door. Straw in this sentence is a direct object. Exercise B, in the following sentences, underline the direct objects once and indirect objects twice. Not all sentences contain both a direct object or an indirect object and an indirect object. Example, the librarian showed my friend and me the biography section. The direct object is section and the indirect objects are friend and me. Let's do number 11. The Pulitzer Prize Board awarded Alex Haley a special citation for Roots in 1977. Citation is the direct object. Alex Haley is the indirect object. Number 12. In Roots, Haley presents a heroic saga about African Americans. Saga in this sentence is a direct object. Let's go to page 46, parts of a sentence. Every sentence contains a subject and a verb. Some sentences may also contain complements, direct objects, indirect objects, predicate nominatives or predicate adjectives. Any of these sentence parts may be compound. In each of the following sentences, underline the sentence part or parts given in parentheses. Example, direct object. Give your tickets to the person at that window. The direct object is tickets. Let's do number one. You need to find the direct object. Have you ever visited a county fair? Fair is the direct object. Number two, compound subject. Last year, my best friend and I attended a fair in our state capital. Friend and I is the compound subject. Number three, predicate adjective. The playful antics of the rodeo clowns were quite entertaining. The predicate adjective in this sentence is entertaining. Number five, verb. Then we wandered around the fairgrounds. Wandered is the verb. Number five, compound subject. Animal pens and displays of food and crafts filled the large exhibit halls. Pens, displays is the compound subject. Number six, verb. In one area, sheep were lying about in small pens. Were lying is the verb. Number seven, direct object. A ranch hand noticed our interest in the sheep and spoke to us. In this sentence, interest is the direct object. And number eight, predicate nominative. These animals can be good pets, said the ranch hand. The predicate nominative in this sentence is pets. Number nine, compound direct object. Until then, I had, I had considered only cats, dogs, or fish as pets. The compound direct objects are cats, dogs, fish. 
and number 10, indirect object. The friendly ranch hand brought the sheep some food. The indirect object in this sentence is sheep. Page 47, classifying sentences by purpose. A sentence may be classified depending on its purpose as declarative, imperative, interrogative, or exclamatory. Examples, declarative. Kiko is painting a watercolor in the style of the Japanese masters. Imperative, be sure to recycle those boxes. Interrogative, at what time does the concert begin? Exclamatory, what a spectacular game that was. In the following exercise, classify each of the following sentences by purpose. On the line provided, write DEC if the sentence is declarative, IMP if it is imperative, INT if it is interrogative, or EXC if it is exclamatory. Example, please step onto the stage. That's imperative. Let's do number one. Shana's dream has come true. For all summer long, Shana will be the magician's assistant at Worlds of Entertainment. This is a declarative sentence. Number two, imagine spending your summer being sawed in half and pulling rabbits out of a hat. This is imperative. Number three, what fun that would be. This is exclamatory. And number four, have you heard the best part of all? Interrogative, it asks a question. And number five, at one point during the show, the magician makes Shana seem to float in the air. That is declarative. That concludes our lesson today and also concludes chapter two in grammar.